411 parts and 7,721 tons. We have no RCS, it says. So, uh, but we should dump... Is there any tucked in RCS right now? That I should be dumping? Hopefully not. Okay, let's just go. Oh, wait. Um, I guess we should wait till an eve window, right? But let's just do a test launch. We know it's gonna explode. Let's just do a test launch and worry about the eve window later. Shall we time how long it takes for it to bring it out to the pad? Nope. Nope. That's 15 seconds only. But it's preparing an explosion, potentially. <laughs> uh, it might just be a flop. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, does the tower not have a collider? Finally resolved the explosion. Eh, could have been a bigger explosion. Right, so struts. I'm just going one per booster. I think the connection between the top of this and the core seemed pretty good, weirdly enough, even though there's a small decoupler there. Inline stuff it's alright with. Okay, 12 launch clamps may not be enough, and we have one strut per booster, which may also not be enough. That brings our part count to 471 only, not too bad. Refueling it in orbit would be a better idea overall, I think. Alright. Here goes nothing. Hey. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, did I press spacebar too many times? Or not? Guess not. We're going. The lag is real. Why are we going sideways though when we're pointing up? What's gone wrong? Also, I have no idea where the engines the booster engines are in this list and when they're going to end. I guess they're the ones on top here. Such lag. It's only 471 parts. They're gonna have to improve on this. There's some people who don't do anything with less than 1,000 parts. Should I try to turn this thing? I guess. I have a uh, i5-12600K. Kerbal's only using like 10% of my CPU right now. KSB2 does not seem to be particularly well multi-threaded either. OBS is using more CPU than Kerbal is. I wish Gerbil would use more CPU. Wish Gerbil would use more GPU too. It uses plenty of the memory, but it's only using about 19% of the GPU right now. They just wanted the beefier GPUs for the RAM space, the VRAM. Five minutes. What's the mission lapse time? One minute. Okay, so five to one, I guess. Well, fine, let's call it a 6 to 1 ratio. It's still not the worst I've ever seen. 
but considering the number of parts, we, we aren't actually launching with as many engines as the the original monument launcher had, so... Yeah. Not great. Really wish I'd use more of my CPU. Well, once we can get rid of the boosters, we'll have probably still really low frame rates. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. Only 11 minutes? Yeah, about 6 to 1. Okay, we're about to get rid of the boosters, hopefully. Off they go. You agree with this, Gerbil? Are you okay with this? It's not being honest about the Delta V, it's probably the whole symmetry thing. Off they go really, really slowly. I guess if we want the engine sounds back, we have to turn off and on the engines. I'll try it. Or not. <laughs> oh no, there, there, it just took a little while. On the bright side, it hasn't exploded. But will our boosters get us to orbit so that the swerve can do the transfer? That is the question right now. The Delta V is almost certainly reading incorrectly. I mean, it is certainly reading incorrectly. So I don't know whether these boosters are gonna get us far enough so that we can do the transfer. We didn't have any sort of good Delta V reading inside the VAB for the launch stages of this, so... Just sort of guessing. Okay, I think I'll just coast. Will the Kerbal portraits cause even more lag? <laughs> Once we put Kerbals in? We're not at the EVE window, so we're actually just gonna keep it in orbit until we get there. At least there's no boil off. Okay, that's orbit. Orbit enough for now. Alright, while this is all here, I'll use the rest of the Delta V and the boosters even though it's gotta be a pain to turn with them. And then we'll finish the transfer with the Swerve, of course. But let's go to the tracking station and see when the transfer window is. Yeah, it's a like 54 to you. And I'm sure plotting this with this sort of lag is going to be wonderful. Well, it doesn't know how much Delta V the stage actually has, so... It's thinking it's all one stage, so its timing has got to be wrong. You want that one. Having 1,008 be the transfer amount is not bad, though. 160 kilometers? We're not gonna even hit that, probably, so let's just go with it and see what happens. I think mainly we're going to get rid of the boosters and start off the swerve stage first, and then replot. I wish during time warp we could at least turn... I wish there was a fizz warp. Where we could turn during the warp. Okay, I think I'll start it now. We know it's not gonna happen the way it thinks it's gonna happen, but logically speaking, these boosters aren't gonna last more than 37 seconds. I don't think we're getting a huge amount of this done with this stage. And maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, we're getting more out of it than I thought we would. Okay, well... Looks like it actually gave us about half our transfer, maybe more than half our transfer, so I started too early. But then again, the sword stage is gonna take forever, so... Okay... 
Okay. Swerving. Well, at least they went without gliding into us. This acceleration, though. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I can use warp. If we can get away from them, maybe we'll get some performance. I guess. Of course, our orbital speed is actually going down right now. Maybe we should come around. Maybe I should plot the real bit into... Nope, oh, there was an encounter there. Okay, all right, all right. Eve periapsis. We'll, we'll go with that for now. Nine minutes and eleven seconds. Now, is that real nine minutes and eleven? What kind of nine minutes and eleven seconds is it going to be? We could time warp, but we also have lag. But okay, maybe I'll get rid of the stuff associated with this mission. Okay, well, if it's around Kerbinus debris, just get rid of it. The other stuff, a lot of it is has science that I might want to pick up, so... Well, I'll do it just as plotted since we have an encounter over there, but... This is not going to be the most efficient thing. It's probably lying to me. I guess. I mean, God, it took a while for that green dot. 953 tons. And we already boosted up, so we are definitely more than a thousand tons in orbit. So we have enough Delta V. Maybe we did overkill on that, but it wasn't telling me how much Delta V I even had, so I don't know. Nope. Well, I saw, uh, I see another encounter thing there, so. Okay, we have an Eve Periapsis. Fine. Well, it's a 15 per sec, uh, 15 meter per second correction. That's nice. No biggie. We could use the stage to try and slow down and capture first or something. We're on our way out. We are... 926 tons. Well, it all depends on whether we want to capture with this or not. Alright, let's say that. Just outside the atmosphere. Uh-oh, I can't make a maneuver. No... Well, uh, I guess we'll find out when we get there. It's fine. Let's get into the SOI and then plot it. We could go straight into Eve's atmosphere. But the point that the heat shields don't have any ablator is a good point. So we'll have to, we have to think about whether to use the 695 to capture first. Let's just use up... I mean, I do want to see what happens when we dip into the atmosphere without using it up, but it's probably prudent just to get an orbit. But maybe I should save it first so that we can do other tests. Is the burn really gonna take 13 minutes and 57 seconds? Okay, well, here we go. Gotta watch that periapsis, make sure we don't go into the atmosphere prematurely. Okay, uh, well, we have captured. Oh, there's Eve. And we're pointing in a very suspicious direction. Then again, that's necessary to keep the periapsis down, but it's probably not the best thing. Anyway, let's just go with it. 
Okay, so we are going to... Let's just take that. Let's just stop. Stop. Okay. I think we've mitigated it enough. I mean, probably the inflatable heat shields aren't going to work at all, but... Let's just save here and try and find out. Well, I'm just going to try 80. That's not very deep into Eve's atmosphere. We've saved it, so if I want to try a different height, we can try that. But for now... Um, oh, I... Uh, no, we don't want that those decouplers. We only want the one on the core. I'm gonna get rid of the core. Maybe I should do that when we get closer, actually, so it doesn't throw us off too much. I mean, it's a tiny decoupler, though. We're actually on a small decoupler, so it probably shouldn't throw us off at all. Okay, but I just want the one decoupler. Not all seven, because the other six are the heat shields. Please tell me it's... there we go. Ah! No. There. Decouple. Okay. Well, it's off somehow. Yeah, well, maybe we needed a bigger decoupler. Okay, heat shields. I press the action group. Please inflate. Is that not the action group? It was action group one. I pushed it really decisively. Hmm. Fine. Oh, it says moving. How long does this take? It doesn't look like it's moving. Me, the, okay. Oh, okay. No. Oh. Well. Oh. oh, three stage. Actually, it needs to be a little bit more. Okay. All right. Place your bets. I was disappointed in the action group, though. These action groups, they're not trustworthy. Will we be insta-burned? Okay, we can turn now. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure, this mission is tough because testing it takes a long time. Well, at least we've got a horizon glow. But we'll be glowing pretty, obviously, pretty soon. We'll be able to see the vessel momentarily, <laughs> thanks to all the flames. Okay, okay, it's getting hot now. 85 kilometers. Not many of the extending flames. We're also not slowing down much. Or at all. This is interesting. I didn't expect it to go quite this way. Huh. I thought we'd get a lot of drag and then explode. <laughs> well, the properties of Eve's atmosphere are definitely a lot different than I thought they were. But what this means is we probably should have gone lower. The engines on this aren't particularly free to change our orbit right now. So we're probably going to load up the save before this pass and try it again at a lower altitude. We're going to see what the critical altitude is. Why is... I swear, it's just befuddled by the sheer size of this. Because it's not even putting heat effects on this portion, you see that? It's like, it's cut off here and here. And I think it's just confused. 
Right? You can see uh, uh, th there's no fringe effects on that side. Well, I mean, we're, we are slowing down a bit. There's just not a whole lot. Oh. That thing, look at that thing, though. It has, still hasn't blown up. Those are the hydrogen tanks. They're still hanging in there. I also think that it doesn't actually do the re-entry heating for stuff that's decoupled off. Oh, we, we've got some heat here, though. But yeah, that one, I think it just doesn't apply the heat to those. And they're coming back. The debris. Doesn't do debris. Yeah, we're going up. I don't know if it'll be fine though, whether how... I mean, it might keep that little overheating bar. Even though I'm going up. We've seen that before. But we really didn't bring our apoapsis down very much. And that thing is still there. Causing us lag. <laughs> it's still there causing us lag. But okay, yeah. I think I'll just load up the save and pick a different height to see what's better. But maybe that's dangerous because this one is starting to overheat. 